At this time, I would like to make a few statements regarding policy here at the college. Urag has asked me to remind everyone to please return materials borrowed from the Arcanium in the same condition as you received them. If this is impossible due to misuse or accident, Urag recommends finding a replacement copy to deliver to the Arcanium. Failure to do so will result in paying, in Urag's words, a blood price. I did not ask him to elaborate on that point. There have been unconfirmed reports that someone has been sneaking into the town of Winterhold while invisible and causing issues. This goes quite against college policy and the party responsible is advised to cease these actions at once. As many know, there is an ongoing effort to research the work of Artmages Shalador. He is most remembered for his great maze of Labyrinthian, said to hold Glamoril or the secret of life. While stories have persisted since the first era, none have ever confirmed the existence of this glamoril or its purpose or function. The college has developed some theories, however. We know that Shalador had an understanding of magic that surpassed almost any of either his age or ours. The few of his works that have been recovered suggest that he had an understanding of magic and the world that few have ever achieved. What is interesting is that it appears he was also incredibly prolific, writing on a diverse array of subjects. An array so great, in fact, that it remains a source of curiosity. What then of this glamoril? It means secret of life in Elvish. Could this be an explanation for Shalador's works? Is it possible that somehow it contributed to his work? perhaps allowed him to live multiple lifetimes in a short span of time, increased his intelligence and knowledge in ways unfathomable to us. We may never know for certain. The College is always searching for more of Shalador's writings in an attempt to understand both our knowledge of the man and magic in general. At this time, I would like to make a few statements regarding policy here at the College. Projects are underway to discern the origin and nature of the College's recent find in Sarthal. Any and all theories are currently being considered. Those with ideas should please speak with Mirabelle. At this time, there is no indication that, as has been rumored, the object is in fact a physical part of Magnus, the God of Magic. It has been suggested that the object is a gateway to the realm of Aetherius, but nothing has proven that idea one way or the other. It has been proposed that the object is, in fact, the entirety of Arbis in one physical space. This would, of course, mean that Tamriel, indeed all of Mundus, is actually contained within the sphere. It further suggests that we are somehow then outside our own existence while looking in at it. While the idea seems dubious at best, it has not at present been entirely ruled out. I would just like to remind everyone once again that Restoration is indeed a valid school of magic. It is absolutely worthy of research, despite many of the notes I've had left in my bed, and my desk, and on occasion, my meals. Anyone suggesting that Restoration is better left to the priests of the temple, I think, is forgetting a few things. Firstly, the ability to repel the undead cannot be ignored. Skyrim is well known to be full of these Draugr, ancient Nord warriors who cannot find peace. I submit that everyone in this college has, at one time or another, relied on one of the restoration spells that can keep them at bay. Secondly, how can anyone forget wards? They have become essential to any mage working in dangerous situations. They are counted upon every bit as much as candlelight, or invisibility. But more importantly, wards have saved lives. This is a simple fact. Every mage in this college regularly uses wards for practice, so as to avoid physical harm. I truly hope that these points actually sink in, and that more care and thought is given to the subject in the future. Thank you. 
At this time, I would like to make a few statements regarding policy here at the college. Please refrain from practicing conjuration spells in view of the town of Winterhold. Atronox have a tendency to frighten the locals. Undead... well, I don't even think it needs to be said. While Drevis appreciates the spellcasting skill that went into somehow cramming several hundred apples into his pillow, he would ask that it please not happen again. He has suggested that, should he find out who is responsible, he is well versed in making things disappear permanently. It is no secret that both the Synod and the College of Whispers have recently made inquiries as to the status of our college here in Winterhold. At this time, there is no indication that either group is aware of the other's correspondence. The College of Winterhold has thus far declined requests for direct meetings. This has been at the specific request of Archmage Arryn. Arryn believed that although the initial communications were innocent enough, they were sent with a particular motive in mind. The Synod's harsh rules and draconian structure are maintained only by suppressing any opposition to their Council's policies. It is entirely possible that they look to our college here in Winterhold in order to find supporters for their organization. Likewise, the College of Whispers has long been driven by its desire to directly oppose the Synod. They focus on research banned by the Synod, such as conjuration and necromancy. The College of Whispers hopes to learn that our college also supports these avenues of research. Thus, they may claim that the Synod is indeed a political minority in the Empire, and should be treated as such. Our actual position and policies are irrelevant. No matter the facts of the response, it will certainly be twisted to suit the whims of either group. Indeed, it has been jokingly suggested that we send the exact same response to both, which each will warp into support for their side. At present, these two groups do little beyond attempting to gain the attention and favor of the Emperor. They appear to have little interest in real study and research for the sake of gaining knowledge. Archmage Arryn believed that their conflict poses a significant threat to the autonomy of our college, and I concur. Falling in with either would threaten to draw much unwanted attention to our college. If either group goes through less official channels and attempt to contact you directly, please refer them to the college's master wizard. Say as little as possible so as to avoid compromising our neutral position. At this time, I would like to make a few statements regarding policy here at the college. Any information as to the whereabouts of the previous group of apprentices would be greatly appreciated. As of yet, there has been no sign of them. The Midden remains off-limits at this time. While the initial outbreak has been cleaned up, the area is still considered hazardous. No more experiments are to be carried out there and mages are advised that you enter the Midden at your own risk. Once again, I must ask that everyone please clean up any materials used in the common areas. We've had yet another sprained ankle due to soul gems being left on the floor. Let's please try and keep injuries to a minimum. The existence of so-called Doomstones throughout Skyrim has been repeatedly verified. The meaning of these stones has not. The prevailing opinion of Skyrim natives is that the stones are indeed magical in nature. While there is no direct evidence of this, it does seem likely. References to similar stones appear in lore throughout the various Tamrielic cultures. None, however, exactly match the markings or distribution of Skyrim stones. At present, there is no confirmation of any of the various theories surrounding the nature of these stones. Their relative positions do not indicate that any individual stone is part of a larger, unobserved pattern. Also, their placement throughout Skyrim does not correspond to any known magical phenomena. The age of the stones themselves is yet to be officially determined. It has been widely assumed that they were placed during the Morethic era. Writings from that period, including those of Ysgrimor himself, do not mention the stones, and thus this idea cannot be verified. Nonetheless, many are drawn to these stones based on the local stories describing them as a source of significant power. The College will continue to research these intriguing objects, and of course any findings will be relayed with all possible haste.